So, you've decided you wanted to stream, but you don't know where to start. You're in the right place. Let's go. Hey, I'm Darren, aka Reckless Roy, and today we're going to go through some of the Streamlabs OBS setups. That's the streaming platform of choice that I use. I prefer it. I've tried OBS and Streamlabs OBS. I've even tried Streamlabs Stream Elements, I think it's called, and I just prefer Streamlabs OBS. It's all built into one package and it's all just there and easier to use, so that's what I like to use. Personally, I think it's a, a great place for people to start, especially beginners that are only just starting to stream because like your alerts and your labels and all that are all built into one handy place. So it's a lot easier um, to get going. So we're gonna go onto the OBS website. We're gonna download OBS. We're gonna install it and walk through each step as we go, just to make sure you know 100% what to do. Then we're gonna go into the settings and we're going to go through all of the settings that I deem are essential. There are some that we may not cover but the ones that you need to know to get going and then we're going to go through the scenes and the sources and let you know what each ones are what how they work and what you need to have set up to get your live stream going so let's go now we're here what's next next thing to do go onto your uh, browser of choice google chrome <coughs> edge google chrome <laughs> And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to search for Streamlabs OBS, hopefully. It will be the first thing that comes up for you. And here you go, this is the site of uh, Pokey and Matt Heafy. Let's rock on. Um, going to be greeted with a big, big button there that says Download Streamlabs. Going to click on that and it's going to start download there for you, right in that bottom little corner there. Now that that is done, you're going to want to go ahead and you want to click on it. Just left click on it and it shall greet you with a message that says, Would you like to allow permissions? Say yes. And it should come up with this message. You want to go on and click agree after you've read the terms and conditions, obviously. And locate where you want to install it. That's fine where it is. Program files on your C drive are usually the most popular place that someone's going to install a, a program. And you just give, give that a couple of seconds to install. And then you'll be greeted with a message saying completing Streamlabs OBS setup has completed. Run Streamlabs OBS finish and leave that ticked and it should start up Streamlabs. Now, once we have loaded in, you are going to have to have already created. We're going to work on the assumption that you have already created your Twitch account. So when it loads up, you'll be greeted with this screen and you'll go right down to this left hand side here. It looks like a little door log out because I already previously logged in before the video to test that it was going to work. <laughs> so yeah, when you're greeted, it will probably ask you to log in with a menu like this. Choose your um, platform of choice. Mine is Twitch, Rexus Roy A8. And um, yeah, so I'm not going to log into my Reckless Roy account because it'll already be set up. So we're going to log into a dummy account that I've set up, if I can remember. And it will then ask you for a token, which you will get sent to your phone if you've set up two factor authentication. And we're going to have to quickly put that in. Remember, it's a pain, but it is for your safety, really. So once you authorize that, you should be greeted with this screen, completely empty, ready for you to create your palette. So I guess the first thing that I would do personally is I'd go down to this little left-hand side down here, settings on this little cog. In general, m most of this screen here, I haven't, I don't really touch. Remember, that we're going from the standpoint of a complete beginner who just needs to know how to get it set up. Maybe slightly better than someone who just leaves it as stock. So we're going down to stream. You should be logged in as whoever you are on your platform of choice. Enable multi-stream. Don't bother. If you can't entertain one stream, do not try multi-stream to multiple streams. There's just no point. Just concentrate on one channel. It's the definitely one piece of advice. Go to output. See, I keep mine on advanced. You can, if you really, really want to, just download it, leave it, go live, leave it on simple, 
and I believe when you very, very, very first log in, it'll ask you if you want to calibrate. It will basically scan your hardware and it will scan your upload speeds and it will set your settings as a recommendation. It's under general <laughs> through the majesty of edits. Um, go to auto optimize and as you click on that, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to, <laughs> but it will scan your hardware, scan your upload speed, download speed, and it will set your settings based on what it thinks is best for you. If you just want to go live, that's it. You're done. 99% of the time, it's going to be fine for you. That's cool. Otherwise, we go into output, and we're going to change this from simple to advanced. Streaming, audio track 1, just leave it. Software, x264. Now, if you've got something like a Ryzen 1600, 2600, 3600, 3700X, you know, anything like that that has multi-cores, multi-threads, you can go with the X264. That's going to be giving you the software off of your CPU, basically. And as long as you've got a high core count, high thread count CPU, you're going to be fine with using that. I personally use my CPU to do my streaming because I have a Ryzen 3600, which I find is perfectly fine. I also stream in 720p because my upload speed is only about 5.3, so I'm not quite up there enough to use 1080p, annoyingly. So I know we're going backwards and forwards, but I'm not sure if the rescale output will be there if I haven't set the other thing. So I'd go to video and I'd go to my base canvas, which is 1920 by 1080. That's the, the, the resolution of my main gaming screen. The output resolution, I put that at 1920 by 1080 because that's what I want to record at. Now, that's important because when you're using the NVENC encoder, when you go onto your output to recording, using the GPU from a, I believe, 1660, all the way up to a 2080 Ti on the NVIDIA side, you can use the hardware NVENC encoder, which is so much better. And if you have a somewhat budget CPU, 100% use the NVENC encoder to use your stream encoding because it's going to give you so much better results than using the CPU. But for now, in my my experience, I use CPU for streaming, GPU for recording because it just works for me. But with the NVENC encoder, you don't have the ability to rescale the output and it will record at the output you set in here. So I put my output resolution at 1080. Then on my streaming, I click rescale output to uh, 2080 720. And I use a constant bit rate and I put my bait rate at 4,300. Now with these ones, I couldn't tell you what half of them are, but I can tell you what half of them is. Constant bit rate and variable bit rate. Constant bit rate, it's constant. Variable bit rate, it will fluctuate, which some people use, some people don't, but I like using CBR because I know it works. So as I said, I have about 5.1, 5.2 up. So I could, use about 4.8 well 4800 if i wanted to but that's a little bit overkill for 720 30 fps so i i like to have it sitting around 4300 4200 as i find that's more than adequate then i go for use custom buffer size and i set that to 4000 which is supposed to just give you a little cushion just in case you have a little fluctuation in your drop in your upload speed and it supposedly helps not drop as many frames whilst you're streaming Keyframe interval, I think when you open it up, it's actually set at zero for auto. I set it to two. That's because I believe Twitch advises you to set it to two. So that's why I've done that. CPU fuse, yeah, preset. <laughs> um, so you got ultra fast, super fast, very fast, faster, fast, and it gets, yeah, you, can, you get where that's going. So ultra fast is basically the least amount of impact on your CPU, but it is going to give you the worst results. Placebo is going to give you maximum CPU usage and the best quality possible, but it is going to massively impact your game. Now, generally speaking, if you've got something like a Ryzen 2600 up or a Intel, you probably get away with an 8600K up through the 9000 series as well. You're going to want to be on like faster if you've got something like a 3600 or a 3700 or 2700 x you're going to want to go for fast possibly even medium because the higher core clocks and thread counts are really going to help you hit it i find fast is perfectly fine for 720 30 fps 
profile I leave as none, tune as I leave as none. As I was saying with recording, I set that to MP4 because I think it's a smaller file size and it's it's fine. It will give you a message, I believe, saying that if you use MP4 and your stream crashes, you'll lose all data. I think the FLV files will actually carry over if your stream crashes. So that is that's entirely down to you, but I personally use MP4. Um, your recording path, I basically had a second SSD installed, which I just call stream stuff, if I move that over here. And in there, I just made a folder that says stream recordings. So I set my file pass to that folder. So whenever I record anything with Streamlabs, that's where it goes. Um, as I said, hardware NVENC, that's using leveraging the touring architecture on the GPU of the RTX cards, which is from the 1660 up. So that's 1660 Super, 1660 Ti, and everything above that. I believe it is not the 1650 or any of the Pascal cards, I don't think. Or if they are using it on the Pascal cards, it doesn't work as effectively as on the Touring cards. But don't quote me. <laughs> rate control. You have all the same options um, as the software, but you have lossless. I tried to use lossless, and it just black screened. So I went back to CQP, and I set it to 10. It gives me half decent results. That's why I use it. I couldn't tell you why. It just does. Keyframe intervals 2, max quality, profile high. Look ahead and psycho-visual training. I'm not 100% what they mean, but I think they help. <laughs> but they do something. So I keep them ticked. I'm sure NVIDIA says it's something to do with fast-paced. Like if you're using FPS games, it's good to have them on because it helps less blurriness or something. <laughs> GPU 0, B max B frames 2. And that's that's basically that. So audio. So basically, you can leave most of these alone at the top here. The only thing that you really should be making sure you can just leave it as um, default. But I like to just to make sure it is. So I currently use virtual cables so that I can split my Discord and my desktop audio, so I can have the ability to adjust the volumes in OBS and mute them individually. But for yourselves personally, like. For example, I use the Astro A40s. So in the list here, I would have the Astro A40s, uh, which is there. But I route the virtual cable through my headphones. So I set my virtual cable A as my desktop audio. I then set cable B as my secondary audio, which is where I route my Discord through. You wouldn't need to do that unless it was something that you was interested in, which I can cover in another future video. If anyone's interested in that, let me know down below. Um, and then your mic auxiliary device is going to be your microphone. So mine would be the microphone USB audio codec. That would be because I'm using an audio mixer. For yourselves, that could be um, the same as your desktop audio it could just be the headset one but that would down to your specific needs to set those how you would need them but that that's basically that one so the video thing we we kind of already covered this we leave it at 1080 and 1080 so we know when we're recording we're recording at 1080 now by all means if you don't have enough hardware to do cpu or gpu at 1080p by all means just change this to 720 so that you're recording in 720 and then when you go to the output record streaming don't rescale it just leave it at 720 but if you have enough whole horsepower behind you to do recordings at 1080 then this is how i set it up hotkeys now i personally don't use any of these because i use touch portal on a spare mobile phone that i have which basically is an 899 stream deck does pretty much everything else that stream deck does for 899 so that's what I use if you don't have a stream deck another good thing to do on this here is where you got your scenes they're not here at the moment because we haven't added any but let's say we've got starting soon live ending soon they will come up here so on here you could go let's just say this is starting soon on your number pad you could use the number one now when you're streaming if you press number one on your number pad you will switch to starting soon say this one is be right back set that as number two on your keypad so i say keypad because generally speaking a lot of games don't use the keypad or the numpad 
So if you set like one, two, three, four, five on the number pad as starting soon, be right back, live. Yes, it's not going to be as advanced as a stream deck, and blah, 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 but you have the ability to very quickly switch between your scenes without having to alt tab out of your game to go to the OBS or have to run the game in full screen borderless. You can lose it, your game in full screen as it should be and use the number pad to switch around your scenes until you sort out something like Touch Portal or Stream Deck. Or you can actually buy a separate numpad which you can macro with software. I did that a long time ago when I started streaming but I cannot remember. So yeah, but other than that, um, I would just leave them alone to be honest. So now that we've got through all of the uh, <sighs> settings, <laughs> um, we are going to try and mark, make your stream look a little bit pretty. So the first thing you need to know really, scenes, sauces, not hinds, sauces and scenes. Scenes basically hold all of your sauces like a fridge. So scenes are like a folder and the sources are the files inside the folder. So for a start, the first scene when you go on here is going to just be called scene. Now entirely up to you, you can call it Mombobodon, <laughs> but I would suggest starting soon. You can just leave it a scene if you want, but me personally, I like to know what's what. So starting soon. Now to starting soon, you're going to add some sources. What do you want to add? You can add whatever you like. <laughs> but I would suggest a image. If we're going to go really, really basic, we we'll go for image. Now I'm going to go through here. I'm going to find my Photoshop, OBS overlays, my overlay, scenes. So obviously I already have mine. I'm just going to use mine because they're there. So stream starting soon, boom done next step <laughs> over here you're gonna have plus and a minus add a new scene remove a scene so we're gonna add a new scene and we're gonna call this one let's just call this one live so now you have your two scenes <laughs> now if you was to set up the transitions in the hotkeys like I said you'd have numpad one and numpad two are starting soon and live and when you press them they'll change excellent so what else do you need on your starting soon screen now you can have whatever you like on obviously i would say minimum you're going to want to add an alert box an alert box is basically just going to flag up every single time that somebody follows you subscribes cheers and basically anything to do with your stream so when you highlight the image the green box that's around it represents that that's what you're holding. If you don't ever want to interact with that, it's where it is, like the stream starting soon, padlock it. If you padlock it, you can't accidentally move it. Alert box is going to be in this area. Now, if you want to know, is it too big? Is it too small? What's the crack? If you just go down here to test widgets and click... Now, that's going to be your basic standard... Streamlabs OBS alert. You can change this and I will do videos on how to change the alerts in future videos. So now if we jump onto the live scene, the first thing I would add into here, if you go into the little plus again, you want to add in your alert box, but this time you want to add existing source. Now the reason I say you want to add the existing source is because if you add in a new source, anything you apply to the first one that you've put on the starting soon is not going to apply to the second one you put on the live whereas if you add the existing source the settings will apply across both which is going to save you time effort and it's uniformed and my OCD will not come down and complain at your stream <laughs> you know so then after that the second and quite arguably one of the more important things to put into your scene is going to be your video capture device now video capture device will be anything from your Elgato capture card if that's what you're using or your webcam or your DSLR or whatever you're using but for the purpose of my video I've got a Logitech C920 so video capture device and we're gonna go add and it should auto detect that there is a C920 plugged in hopefully yay there you go 
So you can just confirm this if you'd like and then double click on it again to bring it back up again. But if you don't want to double click again, save yourself a little bit of time. You can just stay on this screen and you want to go down to custom. Well, I'd suggest going down to custom. And then I would choose 1920 by 1080 because that's going to be your um, preferred. And then you're going to want to just leave it on match FPS output. Video format, leave it on any. I usually put it to MJPEG. I don't know why. That's just usually where I put it. You have to apologize and bear with me. I don't know why, but it's running really slow. Not inconvenient at all. Um, color space, 709. And color range, full. Very similar to the settings that we set earlier within the settings of OBS. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure why this is running like this, but it is. So we'll bear with it. It's one more setting. It's fine. <laughs> so once that's done, it's done its job. We're going to get done, and then that's that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control, and we're going to resize it roughly to the sort of size of where you're going to want your gameplay. And that's roughly it. Now. If that's all you want to do is have your webcam on there, that's all you have to do. If you would like to have it in a little box, we go onto here. And we're going to add in an image. Now we're going to add in a new source because we don't want to add in the starting soon. We're going to add in a new source. We're going to add one in. We're going to go in here, and you're going to find where your webcam window is. And we're going to resize this as well. Now. I usually quite struggle to get this to line up properly. So what I do sometimes is I go plus color source add and then I make this full. I drag it to the bottom and then you can just about see if you've got any gaps around your window which I don't think I do there so then I just go and hit delete and I delete that and there you go. You've got your camera set up within a window. Excellent. Where, there you go. Also, another thing you can do as well is if you open up the settings of the Logitech camera again, I, this is only speaking for the Logitech camera, but if you open that up and click on configure window, uh, configure video, should I say, it will then bring up this section over here, which then you can go through and adjust the brightness, the contrast, the white balance. I usually leave most of it alone, except for what I usually do is I take off autofocus, apply and OK, because otherwise every time you move or you do this, your camera is just going to start zooming around. It's not pleasant for your viewers, so I, that's usually how I do it. So currently I don't have any games running, but with it, when it comes to adding in your games, you have display capture, which is basically what I'm doing now for this recording, is just everything that is on that display is being captured, as you can see. Now, that's not the best thing to be doing for your games. So, you've got game capture, which will basically sp capture a specific game that you specify. So you add that in, you can leave it on auto, and it will look for games to capture. If it can't find any, for some reason, you can tell it to capture any full screen application or specific window. When you go and capture specific window, you can go through here to find your game and capture it. If that's not your bag, <laughs> then you can go to window capture, which is essentially the same thing, but it will capture any window. So those are your options. Mainly I use game capture, but there are some games like Destiny 2 that are real funny and they don't generally like it. So you'll have to experiment with things. But basically once that's added in, it should automatically apply as 1080p, fill your screen, and all you really have to do at that point is grab your game capture from here, which we're going to do with the image just for the sake of viewing. Click hold, drag it down to the bottom so that it's behind your alert box and your webcam. Your alert box you pretty much always want on top of everything because you're always going to want to see them going off as they're going on. Then after that you want to add in another new scene. And if you've accidentally just done that and not named it and you want to, right click on it, rename, 
and that will bring that back up again. I want to add that in as ending soon. So again, if you've set up your hotkeys as number three, so let's switch to the ending soon, it will switch that for you. So once again, we want to go to image. We want to add a new source because we don't want to add something we've already got on there. I'm going to go to browse and we need to go in and find wherever you have saved, whichever directory you've saved your things to and add them in. Another thing I would say is I would probably add in your alert box again, which remember we're using as add an existing source. Once you drag that around, and resized it to how you want it. It does do this annoying thing every so often recently. I don't know why, I'll have to find out why. Where it just drags it around after you've let go. But yeah, so once that's all signed, so once that's all matched where you want it to be, again, if you want to just double check they're all working, click test widgets and follow, and just quickly cycle through your scenes to make sure they are appearing where you want them. And that is basically everything that you need to know just to start. Well, there you have it, guys. It's taken me all day. It is night time. It is, in fact, nearly midnight. <laughs> Hopefully, it was worth it. Hopefully, I helped somebody set up Streamlabs and start their streaming journey. If at all helped you or you liked anything in the video, give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And if you'd like to chat about anything that was in the video, consider coming to our Instagram, our Twitter, or the Twitch, which I have left the links in the description below, and I'll have them up on screen somewhere. So yeah, sound off in the comments, let us know if you liked anything or what you'd like to know more of and hopefully we'll see you in another video. And until then, keep streaming.